All right, in this video, I want to look at uh, driving the values on the unit circle. So I know I've got a, a, a video out there that um, is pretty popular, if I uh, may say so. And what I do is I kind of show a trick to remember the values. And um, I agree with a lot of comments. You know, a trick is useful, um, you know, if you're in a test or just need to remember things quickly. But it's always better to be able to derive them and then, uh, you know, to me it's just somehow more satisfying. You actually know where things are coming from. So I want to show you how to derive. I'm going to just do the first quadrant. After that it's just reflecting and changing signs. But I want to show how to figure out these values. So, all right, again, um, so let's maybe kind of start from scratch here just a little bit real quick. So, again, we talk about the unit circle. That's just a circle of radius 1. So here's going to be my um, already sad looking little circle of radius 1. Okay, so recall the uh, circumference formula is 2 pi times the radius. But again, in our case, the, the radius is just equal to 1. Well, that tells us the, the circumference of our circle is just 2 pi. Um, just by convention, we start our, our measure um, at the positive x-axis, and we actually measure positive angles by going um, counterclockwise. So if we travel uh, all the way around, that's going to be a distance or a circumference of 2 pi. So, okay, well, that means if we go halfway around, that's going to be pi degrees. And, uh, you know, r recall as well... Uh, the distance of 2 pi, we can think about that as being 360 degrees. That's one revolution. So pi radians is going to correspond to 180 degrees. Well, if we take half of that, well, we'd have pi over 2. That's going to correspond to 90 degrees. If you take half of pi over 2, you know, half of a half is a, a fourth. You know, a half of a half dollar is a quarter. Um, so this will be pi over 4 or equivalently 45 degrees. And then there's two others, uh, you know, people uh, always use. They use pi over 3 and pi over 6. Well, if you take a pi and divide it by 6, you're going to get a much smaller piece. So that's going to be pi divided by 6. And again, if you take 180 and divide that by 6, you'll get, well, 30 degrees. And the other one is pi over 3. And that's going to correspond to 60 degrees. So again, um, I want to talk about these points on the circle. We want to figure out those coordinates. So again, since this is a circle of radius 1, well, if we go all the way over, that's just going to be the point 1, 0. If we're at the top, that's simply going to be the point 0, 1. Okay, so those aren't too bad. So um, the point 0, 1. 1 is going to correspond to pi over 2, or 90 degrees. And obviously, if you go around more revolutions, there's other angles besides 90 degrees that correspond to uh, the point 0, 1. But let's just restrict ourselves to uh, degrees between 0 and 90 for now, just kind of the, uh, the basic ones, I guess. Okay, so let's, uh, let's draw the picture one more time. And I'm just going to draw the first quadrant. Okay, so pi over 4. 45 degrees. Let's talk about that one. And when we say this is 45 degrees, what we mean is we mean this little angle between this ray and the positive x-axis. That's what, that's what uh, has a measure of 45 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little right triangle based on this. Okay, so we're sitting at some point on the circle, x, y. Okay, there's some ordered pair. I want to figure out what the coordinates x and y are of that point on the circle. So let's think about our, our uh, triangle here. Well, if I drop this right down, that's going to be a right triangle. Well, since this is 45 and this is 90, we know that all the angles have to add up to 180, which would mean this angle is also 45 degrees. So let's expand this one out a little bit. Let's make it a little bigger. All you have to do to remember these, you just have to use Pythagorean theorem. That's really all you're doing. So this is 45 degrees, this is 45 degrees, this is 90 degrees. Again, since this is a circle of radius 1, since this is a circle of radius 1, that means the distance from the origin out to the, uh, the edge of the circle, that's going to have a length of 1. So we know the hypotenuse of this right triangle has a length of 1. 
Well, um, since the, uh, the, the base and the height are both opposite, uh, si or opposite angles with 45 degree measures, we know that this length at the bottom is going to be the same length as the length at the top. So maybe I'll call it L and L. I can use the same letter. Um, or you could call it X and Y. But I'm going to use the same thing because, again, they're both opposite 45 degree angles. So they have to be the same, uh, the same length. So now I'm just going to use Pythagorean theorem and solve for L. So it says L squared plus L squared. That would have to equal 1. Well, 1L squared plus 1L squared is going to be 2L squared. And now we can divide both sides by 2. So that says L squared would equal 1 over 2. And now simply to uh, solve for L, we can take the square root. And normally when we take square roots, we get positives and negatives. But um, clearly the links are going to be positive. Uh, we're in the first quadrant, so everything is going to have a positive sign associated with it. Well, the rule for fractions and radicals is we can just take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom, so we'll get root 1 over root 2. Well, the square root of 1 is just 1 over root 2. And a lot of times what people will do is we'll rationalize the denominator. So to do that, we can multiply the numerator by the square root of 2 and the denominator by the square root of 2. So 1 times root 2 is going to leave us with root 2 on top. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4. You just multiply the stuff underneath. But we can actually simplify the square root of 4 and just make that into a 2. So the, the moral of the story, it says that L equals square root of 2 over 2. So I know that this length is root 2 over 2. This length is also root 2 over 2. So that again, um, we're just using the same triangle. So that means I've gone over square root of 2 over 2 and I've gone up the square root of 2 over 2. So that tells me this point on the circle is going to be root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. And again, that kind of makes sense. 45 degrees should put you right in the middle uh, you know, of the circle um, in the first quadrant. So to me, the x and the y coordinate should certainly be the same there. So that's how you get square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. All right, so 45 degrees, all we did was just use Pythagorean theorem, nothing worse than that. Uh, let's do one other one. I'm going to do the 60 degree one, and uh, the 30 degree one is, is, we're really doing them both at once. Um, so, okay, so let's think about the, uh, let's find the points associated with 60 degrees. Okay, so, so again, uh, there's pi over 3, or equivalently, 60 degrees. We want to find the x and y coordinate associated um, with the angle 60 degrees sitting on the circle. So again, this angle is 60 degrees. I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm just going to drop down a little right triangle. Okay. So let me draw my triangle over here. Okay. So this is 60 degrees. That's our little, uh, you know, our part in the bottom left. There's my little right triangle. There's my right triangle. Again, all the angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So 60 plus 90 is 150. Um, that means we would need another 30 degrees up here. And again, now I'm just going to make a couple observations. So just like before, since this goes from the origin out to the circle, we know that this has a length of 1. So, hey... This also has a length of 1. Again, it's the same triangle. I'm just kind of moving it over. Okay, so before, you know, well, um, it was 45 and 45, so we could say those were the same thing. Well, we don't really have that luxury now, right? I mean, this, is, uh, this side over here, the tall side, is clearly bigger. The height is clearly bigger than the width. Um, the height is opposite 60 degrees, which means it has to be longer than the side uh, that's opposite 30 degrees. So we can't do that same trick. But what we can do is just imagine doubling uh, this triangle. That's going to kind of be the trick. So I'm going to double this triangle. So here's the kind of the key observation, I think. So let's double this triangle. And if this is 60 degrees, we'll make this 60 degrees as well. So now kind of focus on the big triangle just for a moment. Well, again, if you think about the big triangle, this is 60 degrees, this is 60 degrees. If we re reflect this over, 
um, this would have to be another 30 degree, uh, you know, if we, if, if we look at the right one, this would also have to be 30 degrees. But if we add everything up, well, now we've got a 60, 60, 60 triangle, right? It's 60 degrees here, 60 degrees here, and the two 30s would also add up to 60 degrees. All right, so far so good. Um, so now if you think about the side opposite 60 degrees, that has a length of 1. Well, every side is opposite um, an angle measuring 60 degrees. So that means my entire triangle, um, all the sides have length 1. So 1, 1, 1. That's kind of the first thing. Well, let's chop it back in half. So if we chop it back in half, if this entire length is 1 at the bottom, that would tell me, well, that half of it, so now let's kind of go back to our original triangle that we had at the beginning. If, if the entire length at the bottom has a length of 1, if we just look at half of that, well, then half of that would be 1 half. And lo and behold, I've now given a nice little geometric argument that this side has to equal 1 half. And now we can uh, just figure out the height using Pythagorean theorem uh, one more time. So I'm going to call the height y uh, for the y coordinate. And I'm just going to do the same thing. So it says 1 half squared plus uh, y squared. That would have to equal 1. Well, 1 half times 1 half. Again, just square the top, square the bottom. That gives us 1 fourth. Again, we're trying to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 1 fourth from both sides. Well, we can rewrite 1 as simply 4 over 4. Do the arithmetic in the numerator. That's going to give us 3 over 4. So now we know that y squared equals 3 over 4. And again, if we take the square root, again, normally we get positive and negative. I'm just going to use the positive because I, you know, am noticing that the y coordinate is going to be positive in the first quadrant. Well, if you take the square to the top and the square to the bottom individually, the square to 3, you can't really do much to that. The square to 4, though, we can simply write that as 2. And hey, now I've got my value. So it says the height of this is going to be root 3 over 2. And now I've got everything I need. Um, again, we just argued that if you go over by our little geometric argument here, you've moved over one half, and we figured out the height, that's root three over two. So again, now we've got the value that goes with pi over three on the circle. It says the coordinates of this point, again, we moved over one half, and we moved up root three over two. So now we know the point that corresponds to the angle of 60 degrees. And you know, if you just imagine kind of situating, uh, to figure out the last one, right? I mean, the last, uh, the last angle that we're missing. Let me find a piece of paper here. The last angle that we're missing, you know, pi over 6, that's just going to be 30 degrees. And you're basically just using the exact same triangle at that point. So it says um, the side opposite 30 degrees has a, a height of 1 half. So I know that this has a height of 1 half. Again, that's what we did here. Opposite 30 degrees has a height of 1 half, or a length of 1 half associated with it. This is 90 degrees. Again, this would have to be 60 degrees, which would make this root 3 over 2. So again, uh, by the same argument, you could figure out that this is square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. And now we've got all the points um, on the unit circle in the first quadrant. So. All you're doing, again, is just using Pythagorean theorem is all is really that's happening. So at pi over 3, we said you get the point um, 1 half comma root 3 over 2 um, associated with the point pi over, or I should say, excuse me, associated with the angle pi over 4. So associated with the angle pi over 4, you get uh, root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. And then associated with the angle um, pi over 6, we said that's where you're going to get square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. So, again, nothing super heavy, just Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and then, uh, you know, so to get, again, the 45 degree angle, you're just observing that the, the, you know, the distance over x would be the same as the height y. That was kind of the trick to figure that one out. And then to get the uh, 30, 60, uh, 
the 30, 60, 90 one, again, the kind of the trick is to double. And then recognize, hey, all of those have length 1. Chop it in half. That gives you the base quickly. You can do Pythagorean theorem again to get the height. And now you've got everything. So maybe practice once or twice. Again, you know, on a test, you probably uh, don't want to derive these really quickly. It's nice to have them kind of at your fingertips. But um, it's, it, it's somehow more fulfilling to know certainly how to derive them. And, you know, if you did get stuck and it was important, at least now you would know, you know, maybe it would take a minute or two. But this is nothing hopefully super crazy. Just a little Pythagorean theorem. Um, a little geometry, a few square roots, and uh, hopefully nothing too worse than that. So hopefully this has, uh, 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 you know, uh, brought some of the mystery to light for some of you, and uh, I hope it makes sense.